This Irish TV show manages to make us laugh as well as tug at our heartstrings. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Dairy Girls moments. I remember your father at that. End that sentence, no. Yes, please do. Creep. For this list, we're looking at our favorite moments from this black comedy series. A real life lesbian walks among us. I don't really believe in lesbians. Number 10, The Road to the Take That Concert. We seem to have gone down a weird road here, people. I think we just got a bit confused. We don't actually have to fight a polar bear. In the show's second season, the girls and James are hell-bent on going to see one of their favorite bands, Take That, play a concert in Belfast. Unfortunately, on the day of the show, a polar bear breaks loose from a Belfast zoo, so Aaron's mother forbids them from leaving because of the risk of being mauled. Look, girls, I know how much you were looking forward to seeing this and that. Take that! But there'll be other concerts. No, there won't. Of course, they head out anyway and get into a number of scrapes along the way, including running into Sister Michael on the bus, causing a false bomb alarm because of their hidden vodka, being chased by a band of Irish travelers, and hitching a ride with a drunk driver who kills a sheep. In the end, they make it, and Mary is none the wiser. We just need some cold hard proof they went to that concert. And then, by Christ, they won't know what's hit them. Number 9. Joe's New Girlfriend Oinkin? Mm -hmm. At your age? Christ, I feel sick. In the first season, Mary notices her father winking in church, so she decides to start an investigation to get to the bottom of what's going on. She does some sleuthing and finds that he bought an unexpected pastry from the bakery, and then turned up a street that he doesn't usually frequent. Maeve! Maeve! Really? Maeve? He finally cracks and admits that he had a new lady friend named Maeve. Mary and Sarah are shocked that he would be dating again after their mother's death, which happened many years earlier, and are absolute terrors when they meet the poor, sweet woman. I just want to let you know, Maeve, we'll never call you mommy. Number 8. The Virgin Mary's Tears After spending a night studying intensely for an exam, the girls find themselves in a church, where they begin to hallucinate that the statue of the Virgin Mary is smirking at them. Oh my god. What is it? With my own eyes. The reason they ended up there is that they were chasing a dog who looked suspiciously like Toto, Aaron's family pet who recently passed away. Aaron follows the dog upstairs where he begins to pee, and his urine leaks through the floorboards and drips onto the poor Virgin Mary's face. I mean, have a better respect. The other girls believe the statue has begun to shed tears and think they've witnessed a miracle. <laughs> She's crying real tears. Number 7. What Mary Does to Her Aunt When Erin brings all her friends to a family wedding, they of course get up to some antics, including dancing to rock the boat. Rock the boat. It's rock the boat. In their fervor, they knock 50-year-old Eamon out of the line, and his mother Bridie has to come to his defense, giving Mary a hard time for what her daughter did. You are seriously not going to pull them up about this. No, Brady, we're not. Things get heated, and they escalate to the point that Mary ends up telling her elderly aunt to drop dead. She falls to the floor dead in that very moment, and Mary gets a reputation for putting a curse on her. To be honest, she deserved it. Drop dead, you spiteful old hag! Number 6. Claire Coming Out when Erin becomes editor of the school paper, she has a hard time coming up with content after the rest of the staff desert her. But when she finds a letter written anonymously by a student from the school coming out of the closet, she decides to publish it, despite the dubious morality of the decision. Erin, it's me. I'm the wee lesbian. Eventually, Claire confesses to Erin that she was the one who wrote the letter, which is why she was so strongly opposed to its publication. You made me realize it's all okay. Don't blame me. Erin is shockingly unsympathetic, and because the show is set in the 90s, her reaction seems incredibly dated. But it makes for a touching moment when the two girls finally reconcile. I never showed you my love. I never showed you. Number 5. The Girls Cleaning the Chippy The girls want to go on a trip to Paris, but their parents won't pay for it, so they need to find a way to make some money. Realizing they need to find jobs, Michelle steals the notice board from the local fish and chip shop so that they can get all the good jobs before anyone else. Can I ask why he stole the notice board? So we get first dibs in all the jobs? Fanula, who runs the shop, discovers what they've done and threatens to ban their families from eating there anymore. 
The compromise is that the girls have to clean the chippy, and they do a shockingly terrible job, eventually setting Fanula's apartment on fire. Wow. On a scale of one to ten, how dead do you think we are? Number four, the talent show. There's some discord in the group by the season finale of the first series, and when the school talent show comes up, the fault lines between the friends are obvious. Up next we have Orla McCool. But when Orla gets up to do her step aerobics routine, the other students laugh at her, and Erin and her friends realize they have to step in. <laughs> What's wrong, Orla? She's such a duck. Erin, Claire, Michelle, and James get up on stage to join her and end up having a silly dance of their own. The image of the friends goofing off on stage is juxtaposed with footage of Aaron's family watching news reports of a bombing, which puts into perspective the situation they're all in. Never quite as it Number three, James showing up to take Aaron to prom. The girls' school is having a prom night, and at first, Aaron offers to go with Claire, but in typical Erin fashion, she backs out the second that she thinks she has a shot with the guy she's into, John Paul. I don't care if you're going to the prom with John Paul II, Erin. I'm not buying you another frock and a story. Meanwhile, James is skipping the dance altogether in favor of attending a Doctor Who convention. When prom night comes, however, Erin squeezes herself into her dress and waits for John Paul to pick her up, but he never arrives. However, James does arrive in the nick of time, summoned by Mary, to be Erin's date and we couldn't help but shed a tear. But what about your Creek convention? Okay, it's not a Creek convention, and it's not important. Second sweetest moment of this episode goes to Orla, describing why she's taking her grandfather to the prom, and the adorable scene of them dancing together. Come on, Orla. Pull your shoulder. Number two, what happens to Sister Declan? Well, I need to draw a line under this somehow, so. Dairy Girl starts with a bang, and the very first episode of the series introduces us all to the characters and lets the audience know just how wacky things are gonna get in this series. The entire gang finds themselves in detention for bullying a first year student, and things quickly go awry when Sister Declan, who is supervising them, seemingly falls asleep. Aaron tries to escape through a window to go on her date, James pees into a bin, Claire steals the nun's sandwich, and Michelle rifles through the sister's things to get her confiscated lipstick. I'm taking my lipstick back. Michelle, you can't do that. I'm stealing. She stole it first. Unfortunately, Sister Declan actually wasn't sleeping and had passed away instead, which only brings more trouble for the gang. It's funny how she sleeps with her eyes away. What? Sweet suffering, Jehovah. Before we unveil our favorite Dairy Girls moment, here are a few honorable mentions. I just can't get my head around it. The fact that he's gone forever. It's so sad. It really is. It is so, so sad. But at the same time, you know what's done is done. So let's crack on. All right. Boo! Where'd you get all this? Vanilla's covered. I think she might have a bit of a problem. Catholics watch RTE. Protestants love cleaning. Protestants are taller. Catholics have more freckles. Protestants hate ABBA. We're doing this to reach across the divide. Did your mother get a new big bow? I don't think so. We're doing this for peace. All right, Erin. No need to make a big song and dance about it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, you're a dairy girl, James. In the finale of the second season, the friends are excited when they learn that American President Bill Clinton is coming to Derry. They skip school and wait all day to get a good spot for viewing his speech. At the same time, however, James's mother, who had sent him away to live in Derry, returns from London and asks him to come back with her. He's gonna be the only man in my life from now on. I right. I've just missed him so. Well, you did dump him here quite a long time ago. He says yes, but Michelle gives him a piece of her mind, telling him that he's a dairy girl now and he can't leave. Anyway, it's not like I belong here. I never did. That's not true. You're a dairy girl, no, James? Please, love. I'm serious. He gets in the car anyway, but later changes his mind, and the girls abandon their hard-fought spots to embrace him. I am a dairy girl! 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.